Hey, this is Tony Hart, and welcome to the very f quick Blender tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to edit the Universal Blender template to create your own custom studio intro. First, let me give a shout out to the great folks over at BackyardTheater.com. Second, we should all thank the fine folks over at AVSFarm.com, especially Mike Falls, since their motivation ended up with what we have today. Now, here's what we're going to end up with when this is all said and done. Okay, so pretty cool uh, custom Universal Studio intro there. Um, let's go ahead and open up Blender. And uh, the version that we're running here is 2.45. So uh, go ahead and open up the Universal New Template.blend file, uh, which is going to allow us to create this thing here. Uh, first thing we want to do is edit the text for your theater name. You can do that by going up here and just making sure that the uh, theater name, your theater, is already highlighted in pink. If it's not, uh, just go ahead and right click it and it will turn pink. You can see here, if you hit the sphere or go back to the uh, text, you'll know you've got it right here. Uh, go ahead and hit the tab key. And you'll see it goes almost fades into the background. We're going to use the backspace key and take that out. Make sure your caps lock key is on for this and we're going to type in our theater name. For this one, we're going to use one of the members here at BackyardTheater.com because the name is pretty large and it will allow us to um, show you how to uh, size this up so that um, you can get it to fit on the screen. Alright, so uh, now that we've got the theater name in there, let's go ahead and decrease the size. If you go right down here to this bottom panel under the Font tab, uh, you'll see Text Size. We're going to go ahead and click the left arrow key to bring that down a little bit. And we want to make sure that we're within these margins here on the side. And, um, you know, we're going to give ourselves a little bit of space. So you can also go ahead and fine tune things by clicking in the size there. And we're going to do 0 .850 for this one. And uh, you can see that gives us a little bit of room here on, on the outside perimeter. You can certainly go ahead and make it smaller, but with a name this large, I think if we get much smaller than that, um, it's going to be uh, competing with feature presentation at the bottom in respect to uh, where you want the eyes to go. All right, so now that we've got the, um, we've got the size there uh, set up, we're going to move on to the next step, which is wrapping it around the globe. Uh, make sure your mouse pointer is up in the upper right hand panel uh, right near where the name is at. We're going to hit the Alt C key on the keyboard and we're going to convert the font to a curve and we're going to hit Alt C once again and we're going to convert the curve to a mesh. Let's see, it changes just a little bit here. Now at this point what we want to do is make sure that you have not clicked uh, the left button on the mouse anywhere in this screen. You'll see in the center here there's kind of a red and white position cursor. Uh, that basically keeps everything in the center and in order to confirm that our text is lined up in the center we want to go ahead and click center cursor button down there in the mesh tab. Alright, once we've done that let's go ahead and change our frame number from 500 to 1 and you'll see that that brings up what looks to be the uh, in the, in the right hand panel what looks to be what's going to start off your video which it is. In the left hand panel you can see that the um, text goes behind the globe uh, from the uh, top viewpoint. So now what we want to do is we want to get this um, this text here to go around uh, the curve uh, or go or curve around the uh, globe I should say. So what we want to do is come down to the bottom and the, click the shapes tab. We're going to add shape key twice. Now move the pointer, your mouse pointer, back up into the upper left panel. This is pretty important because if you don't do this, um, this is this warping is not going to uh, act correctly. Blender seems to um, know where your mouse pointer is, uh, so when it's not positioned in the correct panel, it's not going to uh, behave for you the way that we want it to. Alright, so your, your mouse pointer is in the upper left panel. We're going to go ahead and press the tab key, and you'll see that our text up top here changes to a hot pink, and our mouse pointer goes to a plus sign. 
Once we've done that, we want to press the A key to select all of that text, and you'll see that it now turns yellow. So far, so good. If it has not done this to this point, um, and things are not working well for you, let's go ahead and uh, get you started back at the beginning. Close this out. Uh, close your Blender file out and open new and start over from, from scratch. All right, if you, are, uh, if you are looking at the yellow here, let's go ahead and press Shift-W to warp it around the globe. Now you'll see that Raven on the uh, right hand panel kind of peeks out a little bit around the globe there. Um, this is where we can size the, uh, you know, expand or contract the text as it goes around the globe or where it starts in its position and, and how close the letters are to each other. Um, as I move the mouse to the left or the right, you can see that we can compress it or, um, or expand it. I, I like to take it so that the R, um, or the first letter I should say, is going to begin just right behind the spear there. Um, and that helps for, uh, for kind of timing purposes of the music in the end. Now once you've gotten it to where you want it to be, you're going to go ahead and press the left mouse button to kind of lock it in place, if you will, and accept that change. Um, and then uh, once we've done that, we're going to hit the tab key again to edit or exit out of edit mode. And you'll see that the text will turn pink again and straighten back out.